So we're spotlighting the bright spots. I know too much light and brightness, but it's important to elevate these conversations such that you know that great things are happening in this country, Nigeria. Jerry Malo joins us yet again, a design engineer and founder of Benny Group, fabricator, agro-processing machinery. He's live with us uh, from Joss, uh, the Plateau State capital. Jerry, good morning and welcome Hi. to the Morning Brief. Hi, good morning. Well, the Thank last time we spoke, uh, I know you had a lot of things going on. And in fact, someone has described you as the inventor of Ferrari in Nigeria. That red you know, car you fabricated went viral. And you've since done another one with fiberglass. But it's quite interesting that you're venturing into even bigger things, agriculture, food processing, and the rest. So I want you to do this. Uh, you know, when old friends meet, they catch up. So what has been happening since then and now? How have you been and what have you been up to, Jerry? Um, I've been doing fine. Um, we're doing all fine as a team at large. And um, it's quite funny. People, people always think that um, cars is the major thing we do, not knowing that we've been building agricultural machineries for over a decade now. Um, the automobile is a long-time plan. Um, it's something we wish to see that we design and produce vehicles for the African environment here. But, um, uh, as we take that journey, the one we do immediate on the immediate is the development of the agricultural equipment. Um, we just see that there's a big need for agriculture to be done in a mechanized manner. There's more demand for food products out there in the market. And... Um, um, the farmers need some sort of encouragement to enable them cultivate a bigger space, a more amount of space to be able to feed the nation. So um, we've been up and running. We've been developing uh, agricultural machines better to yield um, better results, to give better performance, and to see that um, the farmer is happy and there's much available food um, out there for Nigerians to consume. Beautiful. So you're strategically positioned on different levels. First, you're in Joss, and we know what the weather says and the kind of plants you can grow there, how farming is a big deal in Plateau State generally. You're also strategically positioning yourself in the agro-industry. So I want you to speak to specifics. What is your, take us into your showroom, if there's something like that, or your workshop. What are the things you have available for us? Because we have a current crisis of food from growing it to storage to processing and all of that. So again, you're strategically positioned. So walk us into your workshop, Jerry. What products do you have available for us? All right, um, talking about um, being positioned in JOS, I think one of the key reasons is the high level of untapped resources on the plateau. There are a lot of skilled individuals, a lot of people who know how to make use of their hands, who can bring out a lot of values um, um, so firstly, we just um, felt we could create a platform here where we build those values around. And talking about the products we have, um, we produce equipment that cuts across the cultivation stage, the planting, the weeding, the threshing, harvesting, and even post-harvest, that's the processing equipment. So um, we have mini tractors. Our focus has been on small and medium-sized farmers. Um, so we have many tractors. We wish to see that um, they, they have tractors that are affordable. They have equipment that um, even a small scale farmers, it will suit their environments and their purposes. So we have um, handheld tractors. We have mini tractors. We have planters, seed planters uh, of different types. We also have the weeding machines. Instead of um, using the hook, doing it manually, this will be able to cut them time and do much more work. We also have the treasures. So when you go around and see how the farmers do the threshing, it's a lot difficult. They have to cut down the grains, tie them up together and use sticks to beat them. But having our equipment, it easily treshes it. Um, just now on the screen is the rice thresher. It treshes the rice, removes the grains, make it clean and you collect them in bags. And you can also use, we design these machines in a way that um, as a farmer farming multiple crops, the machine is important to you. 
and useful across all the crops you farm. On a multiple thresher, it has the capacity to thresh rice, millets, maize, soya beans, um, sorghum, and a few others. We also have the smaller size farmers, just depending on what you can afford, depending on the size of your um, agriculture, right. um, depending on, on the size of your transportation means. Um, so we are mindful of building very bulky equipment that a farmer doesn't have a tractor or a, a van to move these equipment from one farm to the other. So for some of them, we just build them with um, uh, small tires that you could easily attach to your motorcycle and tow around from point A to point B. One key point of um, our focus has been the processing. So we don't want to see that farmers just cultivate this crop and are forced to sell it at giveaway price. But um, we want to see that they have the chance to put some value to the harvested products. Um, we build animal feed machines. We build um, cassava processing machines for people who make gari, flour, starch, and a couple of others. One of the most difficult stages is peeling of the cassava. Imagine you have to sit down and peel a whole truckload of cassava. So with our equipment, it just washes it and peels it. And if you do the peeling the regular way, it's done. Um, it's an, an average of 20% of the cassava goes out as a peel when you use knives. But with our peeling machine, it just takes off barely just about 2% of the cassava as peel. And we go further to, to building rice mills that process rice to finish and ready use um, um, products. One key equipment too has been the Irish potato processing equipment being in Joss. Um, Irish potato, there's their needs and so many things that it can be processed to. And as we consider it to be one of our most valuable products because it's only cultivated um, in just plateau states in the whole of West Africa. So we see it as a valuable product that um, much attention needs need to be given to it. So these are just um, a couple of the equipments we do. Yeah, an interesting lineup, um, Jerry, and it shows, um, you know, that you have expansive capacity. And from where we sit here, you know, we're, we're proud to um, interview you and indeed, you know, to have you as um, a Nigerian that is doing something that is very um, distinct. But, you know, some of the things that you're manufacturing, uh, some subnationals, you know, the Niger State government, for instance, uh, has imported harvesters, um, um, processors from Brazil. Um, Gombe State also is entering into partnership with Morocco uh, in the area of agriculture as well. So when um, these expertise that you have is being imported from outside the country. How does it make you feel? And tell us, is it because we don't have um, as much capacity for the manufacture of the quantum of agricultural uh, implements, you know, for mechanized farming that we should have and that will meet the needs of the nation? Or are we missing something here? Um. Yes, you may be right to say we don't have the capacity to produce all the equipment needed in the country at large. But um, I also believe there's always a starting point. Um, we can't just wake up in a day and have the capacity to be able to produce those equipment. There need to be some sort of government support. And when I say support, I mean in policy, in terms of policies. Um, if, if the importation of those equipment can be regulated, it gives room for the bet of so many other manufacturers around. If an enabling environment is created, there will be so many manufacturers of the agricultural machineries, which will in turn lead to the availability of these machines that there won't be any need to import these equipment into Nigeria. Let's explore that uh, point that you're talking about. Let's unpack it from your own perspective, because we're super proud of you and everyone who is doing this to cut costs for us as much as possible. So help us unpack in specific, uh, in specifics now, what exactly you want government to do. I know you've mentioned policy. Uh, what about funding uh, and every other thing that you think that can accelerate your business and even help you scale? All right. Um, I think one of the key factors is creating the demand. And creating the demand is um, copying the level of um, regulating the level of importations. And if there's demand, then the support for the industries now come into play, into key. Um, 
provision of finances, provision of funding for us in particular. Our focus in the company has been to work with um, teenagers and youth, um, has been to see that we create um, job opportunities for ourselves and put our values into use. And um, if we are youth, if we are young people, it means we basically don't have some sort of investment somewhere. When we approach um, financial institutions, the demand usually is for collateral. A couple of times, collateral, twice the amount you are requesting for, which becomes quite difficult for us. If those institutions can be softer, can be easier for these startups, um, a lot of times there are a couple of demands that uh, becomes a, a, a bit difficult. I wish if those systems can be relooked into uh, and um, a, a couple of things used as a measure. And if this pro these finances are being provided, most of the finances available are not really are not really designed for manufacturing. Manufacturing is quite a difficult tax. Um, it requires a lot, and when you even have access to these finances, you may be asked to start paying in the first year or even some few months from receipt of those um, finances. While the manufacturing sector needs a couple of of um, uh, it, it needs a lot of time to devote to develop to test to produce and to start taking them out there in the market. So I think um, the key factors are creating the demand, making the finances available, making uh, the needed mm. infrastructures put, um, okay. coming together and making it softer, giving it a soft um, landing. If possible, providing fundings with no interest right. for this development, like some sort of development fundings. All right, I, I, I understand perfectly what you're talking about. When we have interest rate officially at uh, 226 or so, and then we have uh, uh, the banks giving at 30 or, or more than 30 percent, it can be very crushing. Uh, but let's look at this, your statement of financial position that we'll be able to say there is a future for what you're doing. So I'm talking about, let's look at your revenue uh, for sustainability. Are you making money within the little you're doing to be able to say, there's a future for this for me. Yes, there is. But there are a couple of limitations to the amount of money being made. And one of the key is um, the method in which you use in this manufacturing. If most of your activities are done manually, then it has a, it has a way of cutting down the, the income you have. Um, jobs that with some certain equipment will be done in a day, you will have to do them within a week and um, the, the workforce that you will need to do that now cuts into um, your possible uh, finances that you'll be making. And of course, um, there has been demand, there has been a lot of demand in the agricultural sector. So um, the demand has been falling back on us. It gets to times where we are careful of receiving orders, um, less we will not receive uh, beyond our production capacity. Um, food has been on the hike. And it has, in a way, has been an encouragement to farmers. And those farmers, every farmer that I used to cultivate one hectare now wishes to cultivate five hectares. He can't do that manually if he was doing that before. So there has been demands for these machines. And um, in return, we've been able to sell more machines than ever before. And that takes me to the next question. So imagine I'm a farmer. I'm interested in farming now, and I want to place an order. What is the turnaround time? How long will it take for me to get a mini tractor, for example? I want a mini tractor, just something light I can work with. How long does it take? Is this something that you have off the shelf I can just order from here in Lagos and you deliver? Or it takes a certain time, how long? And then when you say, uh, in terms of affordability, you said you're, you're planning that this will be affordable for all. Can you give us a range for the price? Because I imagine a lot of people who are listening right now, they're like, maybe, uh, this is my person. This is where I should buy from. All right. Um, yeah, a couple of the equipment that are, are ready for immediate delivery. As soon as um, your payments are received, you get your equipment um, delivered to you right away. While for others, um, there's a wait period. Depending on your request, we are quite flexible that we design this equipment to your specifications at, at specific periods. So um, if uh, for the smaller equipment, you could get them in less than a week. For the more bulky one, you could get them within three to four weeks. 
And uh, when we say more affordable, um, our tractors, for example, our mini tractors comes as a set where you can attach your rotivator, your plows, your harrows, your ridges, your rice reapers, the maize harvester, and the trailer, all as a set of the tractor. And it ranges within 5 million um, upwards, depending on, on the demand. So looking at the values that that equipment will give, it's a lot much affordable for the average farmer around. And um, we have equipment that are as low as 100,000 Naira. You have planters within those uh, rates. You have equipment that are as low as 200, 300,000 Naira. Those are the treasures and um, a lot more, even down to the processing equipment. For farmers who can't afford the fully automated sets, we are quite flexible to give them the semi-automated um, process in their lines at affordable rates. Senny, that's a national agency for science, engineering, um, infrastructure, um, is um, you know offering support for local invent inventors, especially in the area of um, the manufacture of agricultural implements. Um, help us understand um, if that offer for support for the promotion and commercialization of the work of local inventors and engineers like you is just on paper, or is or it's um, you know a reality. Have you engaged with them at any level? And what was your experience? Is there an offer of support for your work, particularly at the state level? Um, I wouldn't want to agree with saying uh, most of those supports are on paper. Um, um, I think production of machines or fabrication goes beyond just us. There are a lot of more people in the country and a couple of people have gotten those type of supports have gotten those kind of um, push needed in their aspect. For us, um, we've gotten a few and we're still working to get some more. Um, I think uh, we need to look at it both ways. The person requesting for this support, is he matured enough to get it? Um, does he have all the basics needed to get it? So for quite a while, we've been working and developing on ourselves, preparing ourselves ready to be able to access those supports. But yes, um, these supports have been quite helpful to not just us, but other startups and other manufacturers around. And for us in particular, there has been much uh, light on us. These supports are gradually beginning to roll in and um, we are well prepared for them now and receiving them with two hands. So as we wind down quickly, Jerry, so when are we seeing a third sports car? Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but people also want to know when they're going to see the next one and what's the future? Are we, are we planning to see a rollout in the coming years? Um, talking about the sports cars, um, we've had a lot of questions. Why are we producing sports cars um, while the uh, immediate environment are in need of day-to-day -day cars? Sports cars, um, funny, uh, car manufacturing is quite um, funny when it comes to this. Um, it's a lot easier for me to build a sports car. Yeah, it's a lot easier for all to line out uh, production to line out vehicles we produce in the lines in the likes of the sports vehicles compared to the day-to-day -day cars. Um, the sport vehicles are made out of fibers, so it means just with your materials in a small space you'll be able to make them with your hands. But day-to-day -day cars, you will need a lot of hydraulic presses, stamp presses to build the different components, the different parts. So you may have billions, right. but still haven't gotten to the stage to produce just one vehicle. But with the little amount you have, you could produce a sports car. So the sports cars was just, right. or it's just being done to let Nigerians know that we can do this and it doesn't take anything too much. Okay. Um, it just takes the mindset and the willingness to do it. And um, we just did this to show that with the proper type of investment, we'll Fantastic. be able to produce any kind of vehicle we need. So, but in line, um, there are plans to roll out day-to-day -day cars. There are plans to roll out um, tricycles, uh, buses, um, Jerry, at this point, you're doing everything. At this point, you're doing everything. True Nigerian you are. I like your entrepreneurial spirit and we wish you the very best. I mean, seeing that tractor, that mini tractor earlier on and seeing that you actually fabricated it as well, it's brilliant. But we'd like to thank you so much. It's been a fantastic time with you and wish you the very best. I know a lot of Nigerians will be interested in what you're doing. But we've been speaking with Jerry Malo, 
in case you're wondering what his name is. He's a design engineer, founder of Benny Group. He has a whole team that he works with, also a fabricator and agro-processing machinery. Thank you for your time, Jerry. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So there you see, Nigeria is a great nation. But mm -hmm. we'll leave you with that and then hand the baton over to you to, do, to go do great things today. In the meantime, I'm Karadio Kikule. Of course, Sunrise Daily is up next, so stay tuned. I am Bukola Koka. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. Now let me unbox Jeffrey.